So the Intel Core i7-4790K is a CPU from 2014. This CPU is over 9 years old now, so I'm quite interested to see how it still runs Minecraft. Also the GTX 1060 is also 7 years old now, so both of these components are quite dated, but I'm quite curious to see how they run Minecraft. Before we jump into it, I'm going to show you the main settings here, the ones that are most important. So I'm going to be messing around with different render distances, um, got the frame rate set to max, the details. That's what they're on. They're pretty much all on default. I've not, I'm not using any shaders. The animations are all on other than particles. I set that to decrease because realistically there's no difference between decreased and uh, all other than a slight FPS difference. My MIP mapping is set to maximum. This is quite an important setting. Not only does it increase your performance, but it also just makes your game look better. So I always set this to max. And then under performance, I've set the chunk updates to five. I've got fast render and fast math on. It basically makes the terrain generation much more performance friendly and also makes it so that the terrain generates quicker. I've also got smart animations turned on which doesn't animate things that you can't physically see which can save performance of course and it doesn't really matter if you can't see them so why have them on and that's pretty much what I've changed. First test is going to be rendering a world. Let's go ahead and render a world and see how long this takes. Obviously this is all CPU performance heavy so we'll see how long this takes to render a world here. Taking a bit longer than I thought it would. You know, I don't remember Minecraft taking this long to generate worlds, but it is a newer version of Minecraft on older hardware. So that is something to remember. Minecraft has been updated quite a lot since 2014. So probably uh, a bit less optimized. So we just rendered in. I'm on 8 render right now, which I believe was medium render back in the day. So we're at medium render distance, 8 chunks. And as you can see, we're getting... Pretty good FPS. We're sitting at anywhere from 400, 700, 600. This is insane. So we're instantly going to boost this up because, you know, 8 chunks, you're not going to be playing 8 chunks. 16 chunks, we've dropped down to roughly 200 FPS, which is a quite a drop in FPS, but 200 plus FPS is more than playable for a game like Minecraft. I'm going to go ahead and give myself the two ultimate vanilla Minecraft testing uh, items here, which is the Elytra and the Firework. The Elytra and Firework are pretty much some of the hardest things that I've noticed for the CPUs to deal with. It really does test how well your CPU can actually generate the world. So we'll, we'll fly around with the Elytra real quick with the uh, far render distance, 16 chunks. As you can see, it is generating the chunks fairly slowly here. Even with this setting turned on, uh, onto 5 to generate the world quicker, it's still struggling to keep up with the world generation. This is one of the problems with older CPUs and the Elytra. It just cannot keep up with how fast it travels, unfortunately. Um, I mean, the world border, I'm, I'm, it is constantly staying in front of me, but it's kind of a problem if I can't see where I'm actually going. That's one of the... Uh, one of the things you want the elytra for is to obviously travel, and if you can't see where you're going, it's not really very useful. Now my FPS is going crazy, and that's because there's not really much world around me, uh, because there's nothing here in front of me, right? So I'm not generating that many chunks right now because I'm traveling so fast. So while I wait for the world to generate here real quick, I do want to quickly say there are ways to get around this slow world generation. There's certain mods such as Chunky, that will pre-generate the world all around you. And then once it's done, when you fly to it, that part of the world's already generated. So all it needs to do is load it up. So that is one way of getting around this uh, this issue. Because it is a problem, you know, not being able to see much further ahead of yourself when you're, especially when you're, uh, when you're using an elytra like this. If you're not using an elytra though, you're not gonna see this problem because you just can't travel quick enough. Like if I just run around like this, what I'm looking for here while I'm running around as well is FPS drops because that's uh, another huge nuisance is if you constantly drop FPS, it's not really a pleasant experience to drop FPS non-stop in any game. It seems to be fairly stable, like we're getting 200 FPS, 150 FPS, anything above 100 or even 140 or something, I'd be more than happy with, with Minecraft, especially considering how cheap you can pick these components up now if you don't have one already. I know there's nothing technically in this world, like if you had a bunch of farms and redstone contraptions, yes, your FPS would probably drop, but considering how little FPS it's actually, or how little CPU it's using and so on at the moment, I think you'd do totally fine, unless you had a mega, mega farm 
perhaps. It's very smooth, uh, basically. It's very, very smooth. And you can see I can't, I can't, I, I can't escape the world border on foot. It's just not going to happen. So let's just fly around a bit more. Yep, we caught up with the world border again. So yeah, definitely the world border with the elytra is going to be some, it's going to be a problem because this CPU just is not capable of generating the world quick enough, at least with Optifine. Um, I will have to test this with sodium as well because that's a completely different beast. But what we're going to do is we're going to check this now at 24 chunks. I'm going to let the world generate and then I'm going to run and see if it lags like or how badly it lags. You know, realistically, you're only going to be using 24 chunks in a survival casual scenario. You know, if you're playing PvP, for example, you're not going to be running around at 24 chunks because most servers won't even allow you to see players until they get within like six or eight chunks render distance anyways. I think that's generated pretty well. Yeah, I think that's pretty much generated in. So let's just start running around and see what kind of performance we get here. What I'm looking for here while I run around at 24 chunks is, am I going to stutter as I generate new terrain? You may be wondering why I'm not flying for this test rather than just running, because theoretically I should be able to see like lag spikes more clearly if I'm traveling faster, but in reality, there's just less chunks generated in at any given time while I'm flying because I just escaped the world and uh, it, it can't generate chunks quick enough. So what ends up happening is instead of generating 24 chunks around me all the time, like right now, because I'm running much slower, it ends up generating like a line of terrain wherever I'm flying, if that makes sense. You can see as I'm running around, there's loads of chunks generated in, loads of world. If I just fly in one direction, you'll see there'll be a lot less world around me because it just can't keep up with how fast I'm going. So I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep going. And as you can see, look, there's like a line behind me. There's no world, which is why my FPS is so high. So flying with the elytra is not really a good way to check lag spikes because there's just no terrain. So it's, I get really high FPS because of it. Whereas if I choose to run around, there's more terrain generated around me, but I'm still forcing it to generate new terrain, if that makes sense. Okay, so I've given the world a little bit of time to generate. I'm still at 24 chunks render distance. And as you can see, my FPS is sitting around 60 to 70 FPS, which in my opinion is very, very good. Now my FPS did just jump up because if you look at the sky, look, there's nothing there. So a thousand FPS. But if I look down here, I get about 70, 80. It depends where I'm looking basically, 100 FPS over that way. But anything above 60, I think is absolutely fantastic, especially for such an old CPU. A lot of servers are going to use eight chunks render distance. We can go ahead and test that actually. Give me a moment and I'll go and log into a multiplayer server. So as you can see, this server's got a render distance of about eight to 10, which is not very far, but that's just what most servers use to reduce performance on their servers. And as you can see on here, I'm getting over 200, over 300 FPS at times just running around in the spawn, which is quite a performance heavy area on this server, to be honest. So running around at 200 to 300 FPS in the spawn of this server is very, very good. And there are mods to recreate like far render distance if you do play on a server, but that's not the point of this video. It's just to show you the performance that you can get. But there is something I would recommend that you do if you have a dedicated GPU uh, is actually turn on the internal shaders within Optifine because this will make your game look better anyways. And come over here to render quality and set that to above one times and basically what that will do is it will upscale your textures as you can see my gpu usage jumped not much but it did jump up but you may be able to see i don't know how well you'll be able to see this because of youtube's compression but you may be able to see a slight visual quality increase in the trees and so on so even with the internal shaders turned to two times our gpu is more than capable of running minecraft with this Let's go ahead and jump back on the single player world and we'll finish this video up. Now, would I recommend this GPU and CPU combo in 2023? If all you're going to play is Minecraft and you already have this computer lying around, then yes. Or if somebody's selling one of these components for very cheap and you can get it for a good budget price and you are on a budget, then yeah, I can recommend it. I can highly recommend it for Minecraft. As you can see here in Minecraft, just playing normally, we're, we're getting anywhere from 150 to like... 200 plus fps it's very insane um do let me know what other benchmarks you want to see for this combination and i'll see you next time thanks for checking the video goodbye everybody